All right. Hello again, photo folks. Here we are. We're back. It's the third month of our uh, online tutorial, and today we're actually outdoors, and we're going to be doing some uh, outdoor lighting photography. This one's on lighting, and we're going to be doing the most beautiful yet cheapest light source around uh, the sun. So uh, we're going to we're in shade right now, and being in the shade is really good for taking pictures. It gives you a real nice soft light. It still is sunlight. It's bouncing off of everything else. It's ambient light, and it's coming in. It gives you a very soft, nice, nice, beautiful light. Uh, it's going to be very um, flattering to your subject. It's going to make them look beautiful, and it's not going to have any harsh highlights and things like that. So it's a good idea when you're in the sun to not use direct sunlight, but to go ahead and be in the shade or you know have the sun coming over their shoulders, which we're going to do a little later. Uh, but for now, we're, we're dodging the wind, and we're dodging the uh, direct sun, and we're going to be shooting on these steps in front of the library here. So here we go. Uh, there's a few things to keep in mind when you're shooting outside. Um, one of them is that the sun is very bright, you know, so just keep in mind that in order to get your settings right, you're going to want to be at probably 100, you know, the, the lowest speed that you can have in your ISO, which for this camera is 100. And then, uh, you know, you're going to want your aperture open wide and your shutter speed to be, you know, pretty fast. So uh, just make sure that you have all your settings correct before you start shooting or else you're going to have a bunch of uh, blown out horrible pictures and uh, you'll be sad. So. Um, you know, get your picture, get your get your settings right first. You know, check your uh, your meter inside your camera. Make sure that everything's going to be right, and that um, you know when you shoot, you find a nice location. Uh, you know where lines are fading away behind you, or you know you don't want you don't want anything to look like it's growing out of your um, out of your client's head or your subject's head or something. You know, uh, you know you just want to make sure that there's nothing behind him that's very distracting. Um, you know, we're going to be shooting right here first, and uh, this is this is our first stop. So uh, enjoy. Um, I've had many people ask me uh, what kind of cameras I use or, or what equipment I prefer. Uh, today I'm actually using my um, awesome Canon XT, which is uh, an older model. I just want to show people that um, the pictures that I'm taking today you can take with anything. This is an old model camera. I do prefer Canons. Uh, I normally shoot a 5D, but um, right now I'm shooting this just to show that you can take great pictures with the inexpensive equipment. This is our, um, our budget. This is our budget photography. I figure, you know, most of you are beginners, and beginners don't have, you know, fat pockets to buy their, you know, stuff unless, I guess, you're fortunate and, you know, whatever. However, this is the uh, the lens I recommended, the 50 millimeter, so that's what we're using today, 1.8. And then I'm using a camera body that anyone can probably pick up for about 250 to $300. It's a four-year-old camera, so, you know, if you like the pictures that I'm getting today, you know, you don't have to have the top-notch equipment. you got to know how to use your equipment. So I always say, you know, you know, not like anyone with paints could be Van Gogh, you know, or Picasso or Salvatore Dali, you know. You got to know what you're doing and you can have the same tools, but it doesn't mean you can get the same stuff. So I believe any three of those painters could paint with the cheapest of equipment and uh, I could shoot some damn fine pictures with the cheapest of cameras and so can you. So, you know, figure it out and uh, you, don't need, you don't need to go, you know, breaking the bank just to get some good shots. So that's why I brought this out. And like I said, you know, I prefer Canon. Uh, there's also Nikon, which I've heard great things about. And those are the two brands that I, you know, usually recommend. If you have another brand and it works for you, great, stick with it, you know. But, um, you know, people have asked me what I personally prefer. And, uh, you know, I shoot Canon uh, and I also shoot Nikon for my film. So they both hold a special place in my heart. We're going to be uh, shooting around this area here. And there's a few things to keep in mind when you're shooting and, and using the sunlight. Um, like I said earlier, first of all, is to not use direct sunlight. Also, um, there's a few things... Um, such as where you're going to be at, what's in your background, what's around. Uh, you just want, being on location, you want to make sure that everything looks cool, you know, everything's going to be all right. Uh, now behind me, the, the where the sun is actually hitting could be blown out, so in your pictures that'll happen too. So what you want to do is, if you're shooting with the sunlight lighting your subject, your background that the sun's hitting is going to be good. If you're shooting with the sun behind your subject, you're just going to know that's going to be blown out, but if you want that look, then that's the look you can get. It doesn't matter, you know, you do what you want to do, what makes you feel good, what the, the picture that you want to get. So uh, don't worry too much about, you know, following any strict guidelines. Just know what results and what, and then uh, choose what you like best and, and use that. One thing that you want to do is uh, set your flash so that your flash is going to be lighter from this side. The sun's going to be giving a nice halo from the other side. And um, you, you want your flash, even on a camera like this, you can go in here and check your flash exposure compensation. And then there you're going to decrease it. So you're going to be underneath what your flash, because your flash isn't lighting her, your flash is filling in the this side of her. So the ambient light is again lighting, but you're just giving the nice little pop. So 
The flash also balances out the lighting of the picture so that the background isn't so blown out and overexposed. Um, another thing that you'd like to do is uh, to cover up your lens from the sun so that you don't get a lot of flare in it and it'll keep your contrast nice in your picture without getting a, a white overcast. Um, if you do want to shoot with the sun lighting your subject from the front, you know, feel free, do whatever you want to do. Uh, but just beware, there are a couple things that you need to be aware of. Uh, I believe that the sunlight is beautiful, but um, there's, there's a couple traps that the sun will do. One of them is squinting. Um, people squint a lot when they're um, facing the sun. You just got to be aware of it. And um, also another thing that you need to really be aware of is your own shadow. Because, uh, you know, when you're taking a picture, a lot of times you don't realize that you're casting a shadow also. And your subject could be sitting right in your shadow and the picture will come out with uh, your big goofy shoulder in the picture or something like that. So, you know, uh, a good way to combat that is to step off to the side um, and have your, have your subject look away from the sun. So they're not looking directly into the sun, but their face is facing towards the sun, but their eyes are going towards you. So then the sun's not blaring them in the eyes. They're looking good. They're feeling good. And, you know, they can relax and have a nice picture, a nice smile. Uh, but the highlights, are, the highlights are still sharper and, and the shadows are bold. And, you know, if that's the look you're going for, then, you know, take it, do it, do it to it. But, um, you know, like I said, I prefer non-direct sunlight. But if, you know, the situation requires it and you your picture requires it, then, you know, by all means, take it by the horns and do it to it. So that's that. All right, and that is our first lighting lesson. Um, you know, in the next few months, we'll talk about uh, some studio lighting, different kinds of lighting, even different sun lighting, um, using natural reflectors around, different things like that. This is just a beginner course. Um, so, you know, I just want to get you a, a little taste, a little flavor of uh, what there is out there. And like I said, you know, you don't need top-notch equipment to get very nice pictures. Um, you know, you could do it with, you know, a five-year-old camera and a $99 lens. So, you know, um, don't feel like you have to spend all this dough to be a good photographer. You know, being a good photographer comes from, you know, from being a good photographer. It comes from in your heart. It comes from in your soul. So, you know, if, that, if that's what you want to do and that's what you have a passion for, and you know, put your passion into it. And uh, you'll get, you know, passionate, good-looking pictures, man. So, you know, just get some good pictures. Uh, do your thing. And, you know, until next month. Um, you know, I'll figure something else to do then. I, I, I'm not sure if it's going to be more lighting. It might be more technical jargon. So it uh, just depends. Um, so, you know, write me. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, thanks to everyone who's been writing. And thanks to all my subscribers on my channel. And, uh, you know, everybody, you know, keep in touch. And, um, you know, let me know what you think. So I'll see you around next month or so. So, bye.